Twitter's a controversial place with a lot of controversial opinions, but let's see what they do with medical info. Mella, my doctor thinks I'm hot. He said fever, but I'll take it. A fever is above 100.3 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of my patients come in and say they have a fever because they're running 99.5, but that's not a fever, technically speaking. You are hot though. Mommy cusses. Found out at my doctor's appointment that the disturbing voices I've been hearing nonstop are called children. That's good. Bill Murray? Did Bill Murray tweet this? I hate when I'm on the treadmill and my hand accidentally hits the stop button and I have to get off and eat a bacon grilled cheese sandwich. Don't hit the stop button. Unless it's an emergency, of course. And don't get a bacon grilled cheese sandwich. First date, her. I'm really only interested in inner beauty. Me, oh I see. Second date, me. So I scheduled us for colonoscopies, that's funny. That's not the inner beauty that you wanna see because I will tell you, unless you do really good colon prep, which means drinking that stuff that makes you clear out, the colon is not a pretty place to be. Taming Fred Savage. I don't know who Fred Savage is. Me, donating body to science. Science donates my body to good <laughs> will. That's not how it works. First of all, everyone should highly recommended by me become an organ donor. All the myths out there about doctors not caring about you because you're an organ donor and they'll let you die. It's all nonsense, nonsense. When I'm working in the ER, I have no idea who's an organ donor and who's not. Only once the patient passes, do we even begin to look for that information. And we don't donate the bodies to Goodwill. I found out it takes 42 muscles to frown, so I went ahead and canceled my gym membership. I don't know if it's 42 muscles, but I know it takes more muscles to frown than to smile. That's why I'm always smiling, because I'm lazy. Rodney LaCroix. I wonder if he owns the water. Rich? Doctor, do you exercise? Me, yes. Smoke? No, never. Drink? Yes. How often? Four kids. Heavily. Got it. I long and love for those honest conversations. As a family medicine doc, you're talking to someone who's stressed out. They're not so excited to be at a doctor's office because they have a million other things to do. But you just have this like connection where they tell you about their life, you understand their struggles, you help them, you try and make their life not only a little bit healthier, but a little bit more fruitful. So they get more out of it. They give to the world, they give to themselves. Genetics lab, me. Once designer baby, please. Doctor, it's not like that, you, me. Please remove the pooping and crying functions. Doctor, what? No, you can't. Me, give it wings and flamethrowers. Doctor, me, I'm gonna call her Claire. <laughs> Sounds like they're building <coughs> a transformer more than they are making a designer baby. That is literally not how it works. Your baby will need to cry, your baby will need to poop. In fact, if it didn't have those functions, you'll have a bigger problem with your baby. Just saying. Maybe I took that too seriously. You know you're a nurse if you've been telling stories in a restaurant and had someone at another table throw up. <laughs> I think that's just like being in the medical professional in general. Sometimes I'm telling stories to my friends and they're like, Mike, we're eating. And I'm like, true. Poop jokes don't work when you're eating dessert. Jesse, doctor, do you exercise? Me, thinking of the arm curls to get the chips from the back to my mouth. Yes, daily. Mm. If you actually do like a strong isometric contraction right here, that could be exercise, but I don't know many people who eat chips like that. If you do, why? On shell, at a doctor appointment, step up on the scale, jokingly. Do I have to? No. What? How have I gone this long without knowing this was an option? I mean, everything when you go to a doctor's office is an option, unless you're going for like a work physical or some kind of clearance. But in general, when you go, you have a patient bill of rights. Anything you don't wanna do, even though like we'll try and recommend why you should do it, you don't have to. That's like the beauty of medicine. We work together as a team. If you're uncomfortable with something, maybe don't say, I don't wanna do it. State that you're uncomfortable and perhaps hear the doctor's explanation of why it's recommended. You never realize how squeaky your shoes are until you walk into the room of a sleeping patient, nurse problems, nurse life. I don't know what it is. Hospitals are extra echoey. Why? So I got a text from the doctor asking if my crap was properly hydrated. Turns out he actually wrote CPAP and no, I'm not 
not adjusting to bifocals well. For those of you who don't know, CPAP is continuous positive airway pressure. It's the thing that people wear around their nose at night. It's like a big contraption that lays at the side of their bed. It basically keeps your airway open so that when you have sleep apnea, your airway doesn't collapse and you wake up like snoring because you actually weren't breathing. It's not so comfortable to wear, but I will say there are things on the horizon to make this whole process a lot smoother. Me, I feel like a pizza party should refer to pizzas having a party. Oh, wow. Humans having pizza at a party should just be a party with pizza. Does that make sense to you, therapist? I think we should meet more often. <laughs> I think that is natural curiosity that makes you eccentric and fun and interesting to be around. Maddie MSN. You know it's gonna be a hashtag bad day when the scrub machine gives you two pants and no shirts going shirtless. For those of you who don't know, there are now like Scrub X machines, I forgot the name of the brand, where you literally punch in like your employee ID or scan your badge and it feeds you your scrubs for the day. You could put them on. But sometimes they make mistakes. They give you wrong sizes. Sometimes it gives you two pants and no shirt. And that's a struggle because to get it fixed, like you need to go find someone and if you're busy and it's a shift, Hey, do you want to hang out? Sure, I'm free October 32nd, 2051. Let's plan something for that <laughs> med student problems. Oh my God. I remember when I was on the ICU block and I would be working six days a week, call Q2, which means every other day, means you come in at like 5 a.m., you leave at 9 p.m. every other day. Just like imagine how brutal that is. You have to wake up at like 3.30, Four, get to the hospital, work all day, get home at nine, wake up again super early. Like all you did was work and sleep during the ICU block. Your friends were like, where did you go this last month? And you're like, I see you. They're like, you see me? No, 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 I see. Intensive care unit, JK. I'll get it, JK. Nine out of 10 doctors recommend a diet rich in lean protein and vegetables, and one out of 10 doctors is a stakeholder in the bariatric sleeve. For those of you who don't know, by the way, bariatric sleeve, is uh, a surgery that you can get in order to shrink the size of your stomach, which basically encourages you to not eat so you lose a lot of weight quickly. Other names for this is a stomach bypass, stomach stapling procedure, gastric bypass, all sorts of names. But these types of bariatric surgeries actually have really good evidence working long-term. For those who are really obese, I'm not talking about if you're 10, 15 pounds overweight. I'm talking morbid obesity, where the obesity is presenting an imminent threat to your life. CT scan, patient. Doc, you're sure this is safe? Just a little radiation, right? Me from a mile away behind some bulletproof glass, a wall that's 45 feet thick, and a full suit of lead. Uh-huh, please hold still. <laughs> now look, CT scans absolutely expose you to a dose of radiation. The benefits of getting a CT scan in an emergency or when there's a true medical condition that we're trying to evaluate are outweighed by the risks meaning that it's more beneficial to do the scan and expose yourself to some a potential radiation. That being said, doing CT scans unnecessarily is really bad. And as a patient, okay, you'll get one CT scan, but as the doctor or the tech that's doing the exam, you're doing dozens of these a day. So you'd be exposed to a ton of radiation. So you better get 45 feet away by a 45 foot wall with a suit of lead. Doctor, how do you practice self-care? Me, pillows. Doctor, pillows? By sleeping on them? Me, no, by screaming into them. You know what? I wouldn't even judge. One of my patients came in and they said they get a lot of happiness or their, their emotions out by screaming into a pillow. That's, that's awesome. I think I get a lot of my anger out and work out my issues when I'm like punching a punching bag, you know? And to each their own. There is a surprising lack of YouTube videos detailing how to perform self-surgeries for inguinal hernia. Yeah, because you shouldn't perform surgery on yourself. It's really that simple. There was a story of a doctor who performed surgery on themselves in I think like Antarctica, because there was no access to medicine and he performed an appendectomy on himself. I'm gonna tell the story in a video because like it's a crazy story and you gotta hear it. If you're down, let me know in the comments. No idea daddy blog, five-year-old, where's the scissors, me, Five-year-old, I'm playing doctor. Hmm, cute. On the dog, takes back scissors. Bear, that one was about you. I would never use scissors on you. I would never use scissors on you. You sleepy? He's a sleepy bear today. Look at him. Look at his little head. Whoa, that's an aggressive new.